Good morning. What did Jeremiah ask the priests and the people to do? Our reading is at Jeremiah chapter 27, verses 16 to 18. And we're following through. There's a continuation, of course, uh, from yesterday. And so here we go. Also I spoke to the priests and to all this people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Do not listen to the words of your prophets who prophesy to you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house will now shortly be brought back from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. Do not listen to them, serve the king of Babylon, and live. Why should this city be laid waste? But if they are prophets, and if the word of the Lord is with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord, in the house of the king of Judah, and at Jerusalem, do not go to Babylon. And so this is interesting. Jeremiah asks them to break off their false prophesying, break that off, stop doing it, Instead, intercede, intercede that the situation won't become even worse. Of course, these false prophets and priests, they were kind of the drivers. They were the ones that sort of gave the king permission to rebel against Babylon. And so this was uh, disastrous, and Jeremiah is appealing to the very people who were perhaps the most guilty. And yet, God still sends an appeal. God still makes an appeal to them. God always has witnesses. He's always got a witness out there who's telling the truth and calling people to repent. He could have said, look, you're false prophets and false priests, you're done. But no, he's appealing to their heart. He wants them even now, even in the midst of their uh, complete rebellion against him, he's calling them to turn back to him. Uh, what an amazing God this is. How merciful and generous he is. Maybe more generous than you and I might be. But he's calling them to repent, and what is their response? These people had been ringleaders in this rebellion, and what does Jesus say in Luke chapter 6? I think you remember it. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. And this was the way it was working out for the false prophets. The people, the people appreciated their words because it was, it was kind of a play back and forth. The people wanted this, the false prophets gave them this. The people wanted that, the false prophets gave them that. And so these institutions that God set up to build up his people, had gone corrupt, and now they were useless. In fact, they were getting the people into more trouble, more mischief. So when the unconverted crowd is pleased with you, when you were validating their unconsecrated experience by the message that you're sending them, wow, I don't want to be in those shoes. Then you're putting their spiritual experience at risk. Don't do that. And that's what the priests and the false prophets were doing in Jeremiah's day. They put the entire nation at risk, and even, even the sanctity of the temples put at risk. So not too many people responded favorably to Jeremiah's witness, to his call to repent. But God is merciful, and he made the call nonetheless. Maybe there were some that responded. Maybe we'll meet them in the kingdom. But the Bible doesn't give too much evidence that people said, yeah, you know, I think we should repent. But God still gave them the opportunity, generous as he is. Hey, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, this is an interesting passage today as you were calling on the false prophets to turn and repent and actually to intercede for your purposes, for your kingdom, for your people. We don't really see that they responded that way. But it just does show us, Lord, how kind and generous you are and that you're even seeking their hearts now, even giving them this opportunity. So, Lord, we thank you for showing us this. We thank you that uh, Jeremiah didn't just uh, say, thumbs down, you're done, but instead they were called yet more to repentance. There must have still been opportunity for them to repent. Lord, for those that listen, we pray there will be opportunity still for us to repent, and that we'll take that opportunity right now while it's still available. Watch over us, Lord, and build us up. Help us to be right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the priests and false prophets were called to turn and intercede for the nation rather than lead it headlong into destruction. And there are lessons for us there. God be with you today as you serve the Lord Jesus.